Hello guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So our topic for today is Common Data Collection Methods. When we say observation, it is a method wherein physical characteristics, behaviors, or interactions are being watched purposively and systematically. When we say observations again, it can be either direct or indirect and participant or non-participant. The materials that can be used for observation can be checklists and records, notes, and observation protocols. So here is an example of an observation. So I'm observing how the students behave while doing their activities. And I also observe on how they answer the questions of an activity. Okay, so here are the classifications and types of observation. When we say direct versus indirect, direct involves watching how people object or phenomenon behave using senses while indirect form involves watching the results of action when we say direct observations this deal with live scenes when we say indirect observations these deal with the done products or the results or the output when we say participant versus non-participant okay Participant observation means active observation because the researcher participates while observing, while the non-participant observation is the passive form because the researcher just observes and listens during the observation. However, they just don't participate. Okay, so here are the roles. First, when we say complete observer, Participants do not know that they're being observed by the researcher regardless on how they behave. Besides, the researcher has no interaction with the participants unlike the complete participant. Okay, the participants do not know that they're being observed by the researcher despite of having interactions with the researcher. That is the complete participant. Okay, when we say observer as a participant, the researcher is one of the participants, although he has limited interactions with any of them and remains unbiased. When we say participant as an observer, the researcher has a lot of interactions with the participant. So let me add, when we say complete participant, the researcher acts as a spy. So he has a secret plan, which is to observe each of his fellow friends or fellow housemates or fellow participants. Okay, here are the steps to conduct observation. So first, we're going to identify objectives. So we need to state the purpose of observing each of the participants. Then second, we need to establish the recording method. So we need to have materials for the observation. We need to prepare some questions. So that's why we need to develop questions and techniques. So whatever techniques we have for the observation, we need to prepare. Then we need to observe and take notes. So we need to write what we have seen we need to write how do they behave, how do they act. Then we need to analyze the behavior and inferences. So that's the time that we can judge their actions. Okay, so when we say interviews, these are the methods wherein the interviewer communicates with the interviewee through asking questions. The interviewer collects the data by gathering the answers of the interviewee. So this happens, this happens during the talk shows or the job interview, or let's say normal conversation, or let's say Q&A portion of beauty pageant competitions and the like. So interviews can be done face-to-face -face through phone or video calls or by other electronic media like Messenger, Zoom, and Google Meet. Okay, so this is somehow intriguing because, okay, face-to-face -face interviews do not exist much anymore during the new normal because of the pandemic. However, let me discuss the type of interviews. When we say face-to-face -face interviews, so this can be done in person or physically, while the telephone interviews can be done through phone calls, while the online interviews, this can be done through online platforms like Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, Zoom, or Skype. When we say structured interviews, okay, this contain close-ended questions that are predetermined. So this can be used for quantitative researches. While in unstructured interviews, okay, researchers can ask any questions that are open-ended. So regardless of the questions he asks, it's okay. 
then it can be used for qualitative researches. Okay, so the question is, they are the written version of interview. So these are the written list of questions which are was collecting data. So this can contain the following, the open-ended and closed-ended questions. So they have the five sections. Okay, so keep in mind that questionnaires can be surveys as well. So it just depend on the, on the type. Okay, so when you say researchers identification data, it's basically demographics. So this can include the name, age, location, and email address. When we say introduction, you need to introduce yourself in terms of credentials, the purpose of the studies, and you need to greet them. Okay, like that test, we need to give them instructions so the respondents will be guided on how to answer the certain questionnaire. When we say information, this should be the main body of the document consisting of questions and responses codes. When we say classification data and information, it should establish the important characteristics of the respondent. Keep in mind that the structured questionnaires are the surveys. Why? Because the surveys contain the scaled questions. Okay, so let me discuss the type of questionnaire. So when we say structured questionnaire, these are the, the close-ended questions such as scaled, dichotomous, and multiple choice. So these are being pre-coded. So these are being used for quantitative researches. Why surveys are one of the structured questionnaires? Because the questions are being fixed and they are being and they are being scaled through the Likert scale. When we say unstructured questionnaire, these contain open-ended questionnaires. So questions and answers can be done freely. So there's no right or wrong. So these are used for qualitative researches. So one of the examples is reflection, essay, written interview. Okay, so these are done when during, let's say, consultations with a psychologist the unstructured questionnaire. So when we say semi-structured questionnaires, these are used for mixed methods. Why? Because these contain both closed-ended and open-ended questions. So both quality and quantitia. So test. These are tools wherein skills, abilities, and performances are being assessed. So it can be either standardized or non-standardized. Standardized tests are departmental. These are also uniform because they should have the same set of questions for the participants. Let me give you two examples, college entrance exams and quarterly exams. Okay, while non-standardized can be individualized or modified for every participant. So this can be done with students with diverse needs, um, depending on the age, depending on the ability. So these are individualized. Okay, so when we say non-standardized, let's say technically it is unfair because the questions are different in terms of level and approach. When we say the standardized test, it is fair because the questions are the same for all. Okay, so do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so stay tuned for more videos. I promise that I'll be uploading more videos this year, so stay tuned for more videos. So happy learning and God bless you.